Hi everyone, this is Jonathan Sanchez at CG Sketch. Today we're going to talk about using Forest Pack to create lawns. Now we know this tool makes it extremely simple to do so within a, with just a few simple clicks you can scatter grass all over your projects. I'm going to show you how to do that. Plus I'm going to give you a couple of tricks that I use to improve my lawn so that they look a little bit um, more attractive to the eye, a little bit more realistic. For example, some of the uh, projects I work on, some of the more ornate projects tend to have this English style lawn where they have find a better picture here where they have these um, these uh, stripes here where the lawn has been cut in di different directions to create this pattern I'm going to show you how to achieve that as well as uh, perhaps adding some of these little weeds and a couple of little grasses and colors to just liven up the image and make it a make it stand out a little more so let's get to it here we have a very simple project. I just have, let's get this out of the way. I have a ground, uh, a little concrete slab, and a couple of stones. Nothing added to the ground, just a noise modifier, just to add a little bit more realism to the ground. It's sloping up with a little simple noise, just to add a couple of bumps here and there. So let's add some grass. But before that, let's add some color to the ground. So create a bigger material. I got a texture here that I use that's tileable for grounds. Put it on the fuse slot, the bump slot, and then apply this to the to the ground. Show shade in a viewport. There it is. Okay. Now let's go ahead and add the grass. So we go to our I2 software category, Forest Pro. Once you select from the library, we know that Forest Pack comes with a a very nice selection of, um, of presets for grass. And we're going to go to layered lawns. Lawns, there's a lawns category and the layered lawns. Layered lawns lets you build up layer by layer to add more detail. You could start with a base layer, then add another forest item and add some weeds, uh, different uh, styles to just liven up your, your lawn. You got the detail and you got the large versions. Typically, when you have a large area to cover with um, with the uh, grass, you might want to use the large version. If you have areas, for instance, between pavers and stuff that are small, you could use the detail version since this, uh, these patches that it's going to scatter are smaller. Uh, therefore, they, they're more easily fitting between, say, small crevices and small uh, pavers. In this case, we're going to use the large. So just make sure it's on generate and click on your ground. going to ask you a couple questions for scaling. And since this is a big, pretty, pretty big ground, it takes a second. But there it is. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. So I'm going to start my IPR. Here we are. Okay, there it is. Uh, we got the grass created. We had some stones. Um, the lighting system that I'm using, I forgot to mention, it's just a simple dome light with an HDRI. I have a previous video on that too, if you want to learn how I achieved that. And then I put a couple of trees just to create some shadows, um, the proxies so they're hidden. Now what we notice right away is that the grass is eating into this concrete slab here. Easily fixed. Just select the Select the forest pack item, and if you go down to areas, you'll see uh, an option to click on edge. If you click on that, it'll arrange the, the grasses that are on the edge, or all your items, whether it's grass or anything else you're scattering, so that it gets cut off at your edge. And it works pretty well, usually. So right away, that's been, that's been uh, fixed. So there we go. I mean, it's really that simple to create nice, uh, big fields of lawn and grass and and that's all, really all it takes. Now, let's say we want to add this detail here where we have a bit of the English style lawn going on with the stripes going on. So how can we achieve that? All right, let's see. Here's the way I do it. So you have multiple ways of doing it. One way would be to create a mask and go to your transforms and then just mask it so that um, it rotates It rotates in a different direction. The grass strands rotate in a different direction 
every so often or there are different scale every so often. The way I like doing it is I just like bringing in a different model of grass strands. So I have, I use forest packs models in conjunction with my own different models that I bought, that I purchased online, since they're a little bit different to create more contrast and then stripe them out using a, a gradient map. And I'll show you what I mean here. So let's go ahead and hide the forest pack item. And let's go back to our material. Let's create a gradient, a gradient ramp. And let's change it to solid and let's make the colors contrast quite a bit, say a purple and a yellow. Oh, this one. There we go. So we have a stripe gradient, let's apply it to the displacement modifier just so we can see it in the viewport. And let's make sure displacement is off. Go here, displacement, off. Don't want it to displace, I just wanna be able to see how it looks like in the viewport. If I click show shaded material in viewport, now you'll see the stripes. Since I already have mapping on this object at seven feet by seven feet box, uh, it creates this pattern here, which actually doesn't look too bad. You can, uh, you can tweak it if you want to make uh, one line bigger than the other, for instance. You can always just tweak the colors. I'm just going to have it 50% each, somewhere around there. Okay, and now let's go back to our forest pack item. Select it. And let's do the following. Let's get rid, here's my geometry that the preset brought. Let's get rid of some of them. I only need a few because I'm going to bring in my own models. I'm going to keep these and I'm going to make them all the same uh, color, have the same color ID. So just select the green here and again, same thing and select this green. So now they all have the same color ID. There's all these patches that um, Forest Pack brings in as presets. Now let's add our own models. So I just click add and I have my models down here. These two grasses I purchased online from a separate manufacturer, separate company and custom object. That's one and let's add the other custom object. That's two. So I got two long patches that I brought in. And again, I'm going to make these a separate color ID. So I'm going to make this one match this one. So now I have the green ones representing the ones from Forest Pack. And these uh, gray ones are the ones that I brought in myself. We just have them scattered out randomly. We don't want that. We don't want them to follow the stripes from the gradient that we created. So here's what we do. Let's go down to distribution and you'll see here there's an option called match color ID on map you click on that and you tag the gradient to the slot right away it divides the models based on their color ID on the gradient that you created and it's really that simple now if you were to tweak that gradient it will always follow the color from the texture that you created. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. There we go. Now we see that some of the scattering properties are different from these models that I brought in. They're a little bit further apart compared to the forest pack items, which are smaller and more condensed. How can we solve that? Well, let's come over here and instead of um, instead of using a full texture for distribution, let's make it a dense texture and then control the spacing ourselves. So right now we have 104 feet between each patch. Let's drop it down something like 15 feet for the size of this texture here. Oh, perfect. There we go. So now the dense texture has been condensed to around 15 feet wide, global scale which means that all the patches have been 
condensed together, including the ones that I brought in. And the result is pretty much what we wanted here. You see, we have, there we go. We have the grasses scattered and we have the patches from forest pack that are a little bit lighter green and then the, the patches of grass that I imported myself that are a little bit darker and therefore create that contrast um, that we see in some of the real lawns. Here I have some pictures of um, real lawns with the English style um, effect and it's pretty similar. And that's pretty much it. You could control the mapping of the gradient, which will control how the lines work. If you want them to go in you know, one direction or the other. And, and if you want to create complex patterns, as long as you just control the mapping of those lines, of those stripes, the um, forest pack will follow the IDs on the colors of each patch and match them to the gradient that you mapped out. Now, let's say you want to add a few little weeds and colors and stuff a couple of maybe gra tall grasses in the foreground let's go ahead and do that just to dress up the image a little bit so i got some tall little grasses here wild grasses that i brought in let's just put them over here somewhere i'll bring them in by hand you could scatter them with forest pack in this case just to save time i'll just put a few by hand here just to dress up the image somewhat bring it down something like so Put another one here. And maybe this one back there is fine. Right behind that rock. Let's see what this looks like. Bring this one a little closer to the camera. Maybe right here. Okay, and now let's say you want to add a few, a few of these weeds here that I had just for color. See, I have these little purple and yellow things going on there. Same concept, we're going to use forest pack. So I have one already created here called grass weeds. I'm just going to scatter it. Let's go ahead and pick a few models. I have some models here from Max Tree that I like using. Let's bring in, oh, not this one, Max Tree 21. Here we go. Maybe we could use um, this yellow one here, little yellow tops. And we'll add another one for the little purpley ones from the library. Maybe this will be fine. And now all we're going to do is scatter it. So I already have the transforms for rotation and scale enabled. Let's go ahead and just under random, just add a few, scatter it all around. Maybe a few here by the slab, since that's typically where they accumulate, just a few of the distance. And I think they seem to be a bit big, so let's go back to our transforms and make it instead of 200 to 250%, let's drop it down to 120 to 160 maybe, 180 want to see them over the grass. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Not bad. Okay, really was that simple. So now you see we have these little grasses here in the foreground just scattered through the rocks. We have these little colorful weeds kind of just growing here. So we have a little bit of wildness in this otherwise um, plain and simple grass field. 
and just those little details tend to liven up images you always want to keep that in mind to just bring some interest to your images add a couple of stones a couple of little weeds a couple of grasses here and there when you look at nature from real life nothing is um 100 percent similar there's always variety there's differences there's those are the little details that make your images stand out but using forest pack as you can see it's, it's really simple to do so really simple to scatter the grasses to make them um, end at the at the uh edges of, of your pavers of your slabs of your walkways of your driveways and to create effects such as the uh english style lawns here really really simple to do so using gradient ramps so that's it guys i hope you enjoyed this uh tutorial if you have any questions as usual feel free to drop them below and as usual thank you guys so much for watching